Hey everyone! In today's video we will be discussing monster sets that are useful for tanking and ESO for both dungeons and trials. I'll be categorizing them into three groups, essential, situational and extremely situational. Monster sets are two-piece item sets that come from dungeons and they're available in all three weights, light, medium and heavy. The headpiece of each set drops from the last boss of its dungeon and the shoulders come from the undaunted coffers which can be bought for keys which you can obtain by doing daily quests in one of the Undaunted Enclaves, which are located in each Alliance's main city, Elden Root, Mournhold and Wayrest. There are also a few monster sets that come from Imperial City, open PvP zone instead. The headpieces drop from bosses patrolling the districts, and the shoulders come from coffers that can be bought for Telvar on each Alliance's base in the Imperial City sewers. Telvar is a currency that drops from PvE enemies in Imperial City, and you lose half of it when killed by another player. So let's get started. We'll begin with the essential sets. First on the list is Tremor Scale, a monster set that drops from Volenfell Dungeon located in Alakir Desert. This is a non-DLC dungeon and as every non-DLC dungeon it's very easy to complete. With Tremor Scale, taunting an enemy will cause a Dune Reaper to burst out of the ground after 1 second, dealing damage within 4 meters and reducing their armor by 8% of your armor for 15 seconds. It has a cooldown of 10 seconds so you can keep up 100% uptime easily. When you're at armor cap, which is 33,000, Tremor Skull will provide 2640 penetration. If you're also using the Puncturing Remedy set, you'll have additional armor after proccing it, approximately 6000. So at the moment of proccing Tremor Skull, you'll have 39,000 armor total, which will cause Tremor Skull to provide 3120 penetration. Another thing to note is that for Tremor Skull to work, you need to actually taunt something and not just use a taunting ability, which means that it won't proc when using, for example, Pierce Armor on an enemy that is over taunted. Most of the stuff said here about Tremor Skill will be a repetition of what I said in the video about 5 piece item sets when talking about Crimson Oath's Rive. So here we go. Depending on many factors you'll need that set or Crimson or both. For example if your damage dealers are in full medium, which is the meta in Trials, you'll need both Tremor Skill and Crimson Oath. Or instead of having these two sets on a tank, you can use Alkosh on a damage dealer, which is the preferred option in optimized groups since Alkosh on its own will provide almost the same amount of penetration as these two sets combined. With Alkosh you'll be a tiny bit short of reaching the pen cap, and you can fix that by having a sorcerer use crystal weapon, or having your DDs use a single light armor piece. Under my previous video there was a short discussion whether penetration sets are worth running in 4 man pack groups. Since a DD in full medium armor will miss out on 17% damage, and I said that a half measure of running just tremor skill will be best in my opinion, which is different from pack setups I was recommending in my previous guides. But this discussion is pointless since you can't really optimize anything around packs. Tremor Skull will provide bigger bonus if you happen to get a group of medium armor players, but it will be completely useless for light armor players, while Archdruid, which is the option I was recommending in my previous guides, will provide a smaller bonus, but it will be useful for everyone equally, regardless of their armor type. In the end I can't really say which one is better since I don't really have any data on which armor type is being more widely used. Next we have Archdruid. A monster set that drops from the Erden Root Enclave dungeon located in High Isle. It requires you to have the Lost Steps DLC and outrate its difficulty as hard compared to other DLC dungeons. With Archdruid, dealing damage with a heavy or medium attack, which isn't specified in the tooltip, will summon a bear that after 1.2 seconds will deal damage in front of him, applying major vulnerability to up to 6 enemies for 7 seconds, which increases their damage taken by 10%. It has a cooldown of 15 seconds, which means that you can achieve up to 47% uptime. In Trials, this set is great for example in fights with a steady influx of new ads, like for example Bass and Rogrove, where this set will help you constantly debuff new incoming ads, which is something you can't do with Nazarai. It's also great in Trash if your Necromancer can't get their Colossus ready in time. It's great in packs where you won't have a raid lead managing Colossi ultimates with Nazarai. You can also alternate two Archdruids and completely remove the need for managing Colossi ultimates for a near 100% uptime of Major Vuln. It's also one of the best monster sets to run on a tank in dungeons. Overall the hitbox is very unforgiving and if you proc it on an enemy and they move towards you even slightly, the monster set will not hit them. Next we have Encratis, a monster set that drops from Black Drake Villa dungeon located in Gold Coast. It requires you to have the Flames of Ambition DLC and I'd rate this difficulty as medium compared to other DLC dungeons. Encratis gives you a 12 meter bam of aura for 12 seconds after dealing fire damage. It has a cooldown of 15 seconds, which means that you can achieve up to 80% uptime when constantly dealing fire damage. Enemies inside of that aura take 5% more flame damage and allies inside it take 5% less flame damage. Flame damage is a very prevalent type of damage so this set will increase your group's DPS by a decent amount. 
There might be some weird team comps where this set won't do good, but I can say that it does well in all meta comps. The flame damage reduction is also a decent bonus for some fights, like for example Arcasis in Stone Garden Dungeon. Apart from that Arcasis fight, this set isn't really worth running in dungeons, as there are better monster sets like Archdruid, Tremor Scale or Nazari, but it's very good in trials. It's very easy to proc on a Dragon Knight, for example with Burning Embers or Engulfing Flames. In Trash, Flames of Oblivion skill is really good for that purpose, because you can activate it before engaging in combat, and it'll activate without you wasting any global cooldown. But in boss fights, Engulfing Flames and Burning Embers are better because they tick way more frequently so the proc and crat is on cooldown. On other tank classes, you'll have to use either a Scalding Rune, or if you're having trouble with fitting it in, you can also use Elemental Blockade with an Inferno Staff backbar. Next, Spoulder of Ruin. Now, this is not actually a monster set, it's a mythic. But because it's a shoulder piece, you cannot use it combined with another two-piece monster set. So it basically replaces a monster set. With Spoulder of Ruin equipped, activating Crouch activates and deactivates a 12 meter aura of pride. Up to 6 allies in the aura gain 260 weapon and spell damage. It reduces your health, magicka and stamina recovery by 70 for every ally benefiting from your aura of pride. Spolder is a great option for both trials and dungeons. In optimized trial groups you'll always want to bring one spolder. It's so useful that if you don't have space on your supports, you'll put it on a damage dealer instead. It will unfortunately gut your sustain, so you shouldn't be using it when you're struggling with survival. It's best to pair it with One Piece Magma Incarnate, as it provides 129 stamina and magicka recovery, which will slightly offset Spolder's debuff. To obtain the Spolder of Ruin, you'll have to dig up 5 Antiquity Elites. Oriel Armor Glaze, which drops from Shivering Shrine World Boss in Stonefalls. Clanfear Leather Strapping, which drops from any Clanfear, so it's best to farm it in this spot in Gratwood, called Lyloria. Petrified Dage of Horn which drops from the Abomination Cradle World Boss in Deadlands, Void Alloy Lane Plates, which drop from Safe Boxes in Blackwood, and Void Alloy Rivets, which drop from any Dremora. Personally, I farmed mine in the Brandfire Reformatory Delve in Deadlands. Next, we have Nazarai, a monster set that drops from Shipwright's Regret Dungeon located in Rivenspire. It requires you to have the Ascending Tides DLC, and I'd rate its difficulty as medium compared to other DLC dungeons. When wearing Nazarai, using an ultimate ability will extend the duration of all major and minor debuffs on the closest 6 enemies within 12 meters by 1 second for every 20 ultimate points spent. Which means that with 500 ultimate, you'll extend the effects by 25 seconds. This effect can only happen once every 30 seconds per target. Nazarai is a solid option in basically every environment, be it foreman content, unoptimized trials or optimized trials. Though in optimized trials, it's usually used on healers instead of tanks, as they can generate way more ultimate with Pearls of Elnofe. Its main purpose is extending the major vulnerability debuff, which increases enemies damage taken by 10%, and comes from Necromancer's Colossus Ultimate, Turning Tide 5 piece set, and Archdruid Deverick monster set. With Nazarai, you'll only need 2 Colossi ultimates to keep up near 100% uptime on major vulnerability. It will also extend other important buffs like Minor Brittle or Major Maim, which can be kept up without Nazarai, but extending them with Nazarai will give the tanks some free GCDs so they don't have to cast Destructive Clench all the time. Another situation I'll use for Nazarai is extending Major Brittle provided by the Noon Attack monster set, which I'll explain in a moment because we're moving into the situational category. And the first item set we'll talk about is Noon Attack a monster set that drops from Imperial City PvP zone. The helmet drops from the Noon Attack boss that has a chance to spawn in Memorial District. The shoulders can be purchased from a Telvar equipment logbox merchant, located in the sewer headquarters of your alliance for 20,000 Telvar stones. When inflicting frost damage, a 6 meter area will be created beneath the target for 6 seconds, dealing frost damage to enemies every second and adding a stacking 25% slow for 4 seconds. Once 4 stacks are gained, the enemy will be immobilized and suffer from major brittle for 4 seconds, which increases critical damage taken by 20%. So this set has a long windup, it lasts only 4 seconds and has a 15 second cooldown. Where can it be used then? On its own, it's only useful in trash packs where you absolutely cannot generate enough ultimate for a horde in time, so you use a noon attack to get at least some critical damage instead. We use it in a single trash pack in Sunspy world record and that's it. It's extremely, extremely situational. Only useful in very optimized groups going for trafectas or scores who know exactly how their ultimate rotation is going to look like. However, when used with Nazarite, this set can be useful in very short or phase-based boss fights, like Sunspire. You first use a horn to gain 10 seconds of major force, which is necessary because of Noon Attack's windup, and then you proc Noon Attack and extend it with Nazarai, used with 500 ultimate. This will work only in short fights or phase-based fights like Sunspire, as in constant static fights you'd have gaps due to Nazarite's cooldown. This allows you to reach the critical damage cap without using Saxil, which is basically trading a 5-piece item set slot for a monster set slot. Engine Guardian, a monster set that drops from Darkshade Caverns to dungeon located in Deshan. This is a non-DLC dungeon and as every non-DLC dungeon it's very easy to complete. When you use an ability that costs resources, 
You have a 25% chance to summon a Dwemer Automaton to restore 550 stamina or magicka or 1955 health to you every half a second for 6 seconds. This effect can occur once every 10 seconds. This set provides a lot of sustain and is one of the best selfish monster sets when you need to focus on your own survival. It unfortunately can be a bit inconsistent, but assuming average luck it will provide 601 health, 169 stamina and 169 magicka per second. Oxa the Warped, a monster set that drops from Balsonar dungeon located in Stonefalls. It requires you to have the Scraps of Fate DLC and I would rate its difficulty as hard compared to other DLC dungeons. Each second you are in combat, you gain a stack of Dark Light, up to 30 stacks max. Each stack of Dark Light increases your stamina, magicka and health recovery by 8. Each second you are out of combat, lose a stack of Dark Light. After 30 seconds this set will provide 310 of all recoveries, if we count in the One Piece bonus, which provides 70 of each of them. With Major Endurance and Intellect, which you should have at all times from your potion, this will provide 201 of all resources per second. If you happen to also have minor endurance and intellect, this will be boosted up to 224. And it can also be boosted further by various class passives, such as for example Daedric Protection. This is more than what Engine Guardian provides and is way more consistent. Roxas' only downside is that stamina recovery doesn't work while blocking, which is why Engine Guardian is a better defensive sustain set for less experienced players. Vicosa a monster set that drops from Moonhunter Keep Dungeon located in Reaper's March. It requires you to have the Wolf Hunter DLC and I would rate its difficulty as medium compared to other DLC dungeons. When you bash an enemy you've taunted, you apply Major Cowardice for 8 seconds, which reduces their weapon and spell damage by 430, which is approximately 11% damage reduction. It has a cooldown of 15 seconds, so you can keep up up to 53% uptime. Major Cowardice can help a lot with group survivability, so it's very important to keep this debuff up in fights like for example Tideborn Talaria, which deals massive damage to the entire group with the Maelstrom ability. The reason Vicosa is only situational is because there is a much better source of Major Cowardice, Nightblade's Aspect of Terror skill, which applies Major Cowardice for 10 seconds and does it in an area instead of only against a single target. However, if you simply don't have a Nightblade support in your group, Vicosa is better than nothing. And now we're moving on to the extremely situational category. Starting off with Bloodspawn, a monster set that drops from Spinner Clutch 2 dungeon located in Glenambra. This is a non-DLC dungeon and as every non-DLC dungeon it's very easy to complete. When you take damage you have 6% chance to generate 13 ultimate and increase your armor by 3731 for 5 seconds. This effect can occur once every 5 seconds. The uptime on the armor buff will be way too low for you to tailor your build around it. If you were to balance your armor around Bloodspawn you'd be at 29k without the buff. So you'd be taking 10% more damage whenever Bloodspawn isn't procced. But that's not why the set landed in Extremely Situational. It's because of the ultigen part. If you're using Albane set with Magma Shell to get around some one-shot mechanics, you can use Bloodspawn to improve your ultigen a bit and make it safer. If you're more interested about how it works, I made a video called Actual Immortal Tank Build. Most of it is about a completely immortal build, which has no use for optimized groups, but there's a timestamp with a watered down version of it, which is actually useful, for example, in Dressel Reef or Cloudrest. And those versions are actually making use of Bloodspawn. Baron Zaudrus. A monster set that drops from the Cauldron Dungeon located in the Shan. It requires you to have the Flames of Ambition DLC and I would rate its difficulty as very easy compared to other DLC dungeons. Applying a status effect to an enemy grants you a stack of Zaldrus Ambition for 10 seconds, up to 3 stacks max. When you gain 3 stacks, the stacks are removed and you gain 4 ultimate. On gaining ultimate, you cannot gain additional stacks of Zaldrus Ambition for 1 second. This set can be a nice boost to your ultigen if your job already involves applying lots of status effects. One example that I can give where this set was useful is the previous world record of Sunspire in the Navintas fight. The previous one because in the current one I've used non attack. But I decided to still mention Baron Zaldrus because not every team will have the coordination required to make use of non attack. Magma Incarnate, a monster set that drops from the Dreadcellar dungeon located in the Shan. It requires you to have the Flames of Ambition DLC and I would rate its difficulty as hard compared to other DLC dungeons. When you heal yourself or a group member with a single target heal ability, grant the lowest health group member within 28 meters minor courage, which increases their weapon and spell damage by 215, and minor resolve, which increases their armor by 2974 for 10 seconds. This buff will then bounce to a nearby group member within 8 meters, up to 3 times, applying minor courage and minor resolve for 10 seconds. It has a cooldown of 15 seconds, so you can keep up 67% uptime. It won't bounce twice to the same person. This set is only useful in dungeons. It's a decent alternative to Spolder of Ruin or Archdruid. It provides less weapon damage than Spolder of Ruin and with a lower uptime, but it doesn't screw up your sustain and it also applies this buff to yourself, which will improve your healing. And it also provides minor resolve, which will provide around 6% damage mitigation to your teammates. If you as a tank were at 30k armor without this buff, then it would be providing you with 8.31% damage mitigation. But the thing is that with only 67% uptime, you shouldn't be balancing your armor around it. 
and you should aim for reaching armor cap without accounting for magma incarnates. You also have to be aware of other sources of minor courage, because if any of these is present, they make magma incarnate useless. The most important source of minor courage is the claw of Yolnacrin set. In my other guides I'm recommending this set for trash packs in dungeons, but I'm always taking it off for bosses and replacing it with turning tide. Next one is the Oaken Soul Ring. It provides permanent minor courage, so if your DDs are using it, your magma incarnate is useless. There is also Pack Leader, Werewolf's ultimate ability. This morph is a tank morph, so it's unlikely you'll see a DD werewolf using it, but if you're a werewolf tank yourself, you should know that magma incarnate will be useless for you. Then there's the Crusader, which you'll most likely only find in optimized trailer groups. Then there's even more niche stuff like Pangrid than Mother, but it's a tank set, so you just gotta know not to run with magma. There's also Phoenix Moth Tutelage, but it's straight up inferior to other 5 piece minor courage sets because it doesn't provide 100% uptime and it does not proc on overhealing. There's also Nibelade's power extraction skill, but it's very unlikely you'll have 3 Nibelades using that. And the last set for today, Lord Warden. A monster set that drops from Imperial City Prison Dungeon, located in Imperial City. It requires you to have the Imperial City DLC, but it's free to claim in the Crown Store, and I would rate its difficulty as very easy compared to other DLC dungeons. When you take damage, you have 50% chance to summon a Shadow Orb for 10 seconds that increases armor of everyone within 8 meters by 3180. This effect can occur once every 10 seconds, so you can get up to very close to 100%. If you're constantly taking damage. As long as the fight doesn't involve too much movement and you're always close to your group, this set can be great to improve your and your group's survivability. 50% proc chance is good enough to balance your armor value around it, so it's a great option especially for non-Nord characters who would struggle with reaching armor cap otherwise. It also provides 1.5k armor with its one piece bonus. The 3k armor should provide around 6% damage mitigation to your teammates. And that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and see you next time.